Well, this is the final stretch for me for the postgraduate program for artificial intelligence and machine learning at the University of Texas at Austin. It's a seven month program designed to build concrete skills in AI and ML. And you get a professional certificate at the end of it. This video is part of a series where I'm reviewing the program in real time as I'm completing it. And today I'll review the sixth and for me, final module for natural language processing. Basically what you might know to be ChatGPT, Copilot, Gemini, or other large language models. I'll talk through what I learned, the project I did, the time commitment, and the difficulty. I cover the other modules in other videos, so make sure to subscribe, stay tuned, check out some of those after you watch this one. And of course, feel free to check out the link down below to get more information on this program for yourself. So with that said, Let's get to it. For me, this was the most complex module, but fortunately, it was the last one. This one's all behind the curtains of how large language models work. A neural network gets trained on a huge set of text data. Think of every bit of writing that's publicly available on the internet today, and it converts all these words and word groupings into number vectors. These squares of numbers that represent these words. And it needs to be a numerical representation because that's how the machine actually interprets things and uses it to do a bunch of calculations. And from that, there are a handful of different models you can use to do that conversion from text to numbers. But essentially what's happening is that the model, whichever one you choose, based on a huge data set that it's given and trained on, starts to learn common word sequencing and the importance of some of those words. But here's a trick. It's all context dependent, which means that the meaning of a word not only is derived from the meaning of the word itself, but more importantly, the words around it. Take the following two sentences as an example. Sentence one is, that person was very cold and unapproachable when I met them. Second sentence is, that ice cream is very cold. The word cold takes on two different meanings based on the words around it. One is referring to someone's demeanor. The other is referring to the temperature of a dessert. With enough exposure to the word cold in these different contexts, the model will be able to generate grammatically correct and contextually accurate sentences depending on how you prompt it. So if you're familiar with ChatGPT and you've played around with it at any point in time, if you ask it a certain question in a certain way and you give it a certain context, it's going to be able to recognize that context and put together a sentence or a paragraph. And really the machine is just putting these word groupings together that makes sense depending on how you prompted it. And for the model to understand a lot of those nuances is really critical and an important concept in large language models and natural language processing. Which brings me to the project. The business challenge asked the question of how much do news articles impact the price of a stock? The main part of this project actually had to do with sentiment analysis. For any given week, you have a number of news articles that are written and a model that interprets sentiment. So is it a, a negative article, a neutral, or a positive? And sentiment in particular is very nuanced in language because you've got things like irony and sarcasm. And it takes a well-trained model to understand or at least have a good estimate as to whether or not a news article is negative, neutral, or positive. And based on that, to what degree can it affect stock price, if at all? So the objective here was to build an AI-driven sentiment analysis model that automatically processes and summarizes news articles for a given week. And those summaries are then used to help make a more informed decision about an investment strategy. Now, this was the only project that I did in the entire program where I, I did the low code version of it, which to explain quickly, every project in this program allows you to submit an output in one of two ways. One is full code, where you build all the code yourself from scratch, and your submission is the notebook itself with the code in there, along with the comments and the insights and analysis 
written in it. And then there is the low code submission. This is where they provide you a notebook with most of the code and you just fill out a handful of blanks. But the submission is actually a PowerPoint presentation explaining your findings, insights, and ultimately your recommendation. And because all the coding steps involved were quite a bit lengthier and more complex than I had time to really deep dive into and, and learn really well, I opted for low code. Now I actually didn't care all that much for the project. I didn't have a whole lot of fun doing it. And it partly had to do with the fact that the business challenge actually didn't focus as much on whether the sentiment actually had an impact on the stock price. I thought that's where the project was going initially. An AI model to summarize all these news articles and their sentiment. Now actually when I did the full code version of this, which is the path I started going down, before I realized it would take me way too long. I actually did do some correlation analysis where does the sentiment have any impact on stock price or was there any relationship? And really, the answer was kind of no. <laughs> I didn't see any, any really meaningful relationship there, which makes sense. There's a lot of things that impact stock price. If you have, you realize there are many variables and news is just one of many, but the project just really wanted you to build an AI driven model to summarize news articles and their sentiment. And like the other projects, you build out multiple models. And some of what they talk about here are some models that they pull from, which are word to vec glove and sentence transformer, which are all different models you can call upon and use those. And then you of course tune some of the parameters to get a better and better output. And then you get a final model that produces some level of accuracy. After you do that in this project, then it's your job to actually prompt it. You prompt the large language model you just built. And the end result should be just an output of all the different weeks, the summaries of all the news articles for those weeks, along with the sentiment. Is it negative, neutral, positive? All that data analysis, the model building, all that was put into a PowerPoint and along with my recommendation, it was submitted. Whew. I'm glad I'm done. This one took probably the longest out of any module because a lot of the pre-recorded videos were extremely lengthy. And the project itself ended up being quite lengthy for me because I did attempt the full code for quite a while before I realized it's gonna take me way too long. That's when I transitioned to low code. Once I did that, it became quite a bit faster. So it wasn't too bad, but it still took quite a bit of time. So the module itself took me maybe about 12 hours a week on average. Now, as far as difficulty, this one was easily a five out of five. Compared to machine learning and many of the other modules that had to do strictly with numbers, having a model for text was pretty complex for me from a coding standpoint. There are a lot of steps involved and the real differences in all the different models were actually a little bit lost on me. I understood the general idea of what the models were doing, but this was definitely a case where I completed parts of this project and I didn't fully understand what was happening, but it worked. So take that for what it's worth. In fact, I think that's maybe from what I understand in real life in coding, sometimes you, you're writing code you don't know quite how it works, but it actually works. So just kind of kind of let it work and you move on. Let it work, move on. So because it was a difficult module and the last module it was a bit of a rough end for me for the program. At this point, I was pretty burnt out. Not necessarily from the program itself, but when you consider the program, other obligations in life and work, that can sometimes be a lot. But it doesn't take away from the content itself. All of it was really good. It's great quality, explained in good detail. So I actually didn't have a lot of issues with it. It's just that the content was complex and I didn't spend as much time as I could have or should have to really understand the coding behind large language models. But needless to say, I am super glad to be done. And in my next video of the series, I'm gonna do a full recap of my seven month experience in the program. So stay tuned for that one. If you have any questions about this module or any of the modules, feel free to leave a question or comment down below. And with that said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you around.